<laughs> Welcome back to the show, everyone. Uh, I've been looking forward to this segment all day. It is going to be delicious, and we're going to learn something. Absolutely. And the next time you're in Costco and you see those giant bottles of run cheap away. olive oil, run away. And we're going to tell you why you should spend the money on the good stuff. Teresa Kuhn is joining us now. The olive oil merchant is Hi, Teresa. Place. How are you? I'm very well. Thank so you. So how did this come into your life, being an olive oil merchant? Um, well, uh, I moved to Italy about 10 years ago, uh, lived there for 10 years, and in the process of moving back to Canada, I was thinking to myself, what are the things I'm going to miss most about living there? <laughs> Great olive oil. <laughs> Great olive oil was really top of my list. It is, and it is. Maybe you can explain, because a lot of people are used to what they get in the grocery stores and just buy, you know, whatever's there. But what is the difference between that kind of olive oil and the real deal? Okay, so there's several different grades of olive oil. The, the top grade is, what we, is extra virgin, yeah. uh, the second grade would be virgin and then the third is just olive oil. Um, <laughs> it's been around. It's been, around. <laughs> it's been pressed. It's no virgin. <laughs> um, so extra virgin is the, like I said, the, the top quality oil. And the reason why it's top quality is because it's the first press of oil and it's the cold pressed oil. And it has all of those health benefits and wonderful things that go yeah. along and with olive oil. And the flavor is well, incredible. And, and there's all kinds of details we're going to go through. Maybe we should talk about the first one and, and we'll go through some of the questions I have as we go. For sure. So all of these oils here are, are artisan oils, which um, in addition to being extra virgin olive oils, they're small batches. Mm -hmm. So they're not the big commercial yeah. uh, production that you would maybe find at your typical grocery uh, and store. And all of them have, and this is something that's a little bit foreign to Canada, best before days. Yes, they do. Um, European union regulations insist on best before dates and that's usually 18 months to two years from the bottling date um, and in Canada those regulations aren't enforced well, unfortunately. It, it makes sense when you think about it and the way you described it is this is juice. It is it's freshly squeezed juice there's nothing else in there there's no additives preservatives it's simply the the liquid that comes out of an olive when you squish it. Okay and so what region is this one this, from and what is, is it all about? This is called Bonamini it's from Veneto which is the region of Romeo and Juliet. So it's um, a romantic oil. It's, it's a romantic oil. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, all oils are romantic <laughs> oils. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. Okay, we're fine. And now. what about the flavor of this one? <laughs> it's um, we would categorize it as, as a delicate oil. Mm -hmm. So it's a blend of two olives that are typical to the region of Veneto, um, and it's delicate, which means you want to put it on your salads, lighter lighter dishes. Um, putting it on a heavier dish like a steak or a roasted meat, it's going to be totally lost. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when you do use this quality of olive oil as a dressing, you really don't need a lot of other seasoning, and that's the thing. That's the right. salad dressings that we use in North yeah. America yeah. are so doused with other things, but it something like the this. Flavor. That's absolutely Simple. right. Yeah, we call okay. them dressing oils for a reason because they're, I mean, yeah. they're perfect just dressing, and not just salads, but other things as well. Well, and the subtleties and complexities that go through all the, all, you know, the tasting and, and sort of everything else, it's amazing. Try what's, it, Michael. What's this one? Oh, Please. Right. you got to be our, our, our taster. Oh, you have lipstick on. I forgot about I that. I do. Sorry. That and. You know, you and you're a girl, and on you camera. don't think it's rude to talk to your mouth full. <laughs> <laughs> Lower <Wait>. expectations. See, <laughs> <laughs> the next to me when I have a full mouth. See? Oh, is it good? Well, I was telling you before. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't a setup. I just knew we'd do it. It's good though, right? Just nod. Mm, and we'll delicious. move on to the next one. Tell us about this one. <laughs> the second oil is moving, so if you're wow. familiar with the geography of Italy, uh, Veneto's the, the far north. This is down to the ankle of mm -hmm. the boot, so around the area of, of Naples. It's called Vantera. It's a blend of three different olives, typical to that region. And um, I didn't know they blended olives. That's really interesting do. too. Yeah, it's um, actually a lot like wine that, um, you know, you blend different olives trying to achieve different, different flavors, yeah. different flavors, different characteristics. Well, I was saying the characteristic that always appeals to me for some reason is olive oil, is that sort of grassiness, grassiness you yeah. know, that, that you get, but there's a lot of other flavors that go along there as well. There is, you know, herbaceous, which is very close to grassiness. Um, of course, fruity. There's some that even say that you can taste artichoke or fresh oh. tomato. Those um, are the people that say that they can taste gasoline and wine, and I true. still think they're lying. <laughs> After every one of these, I'm gonna say tenants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mikey, big difference? Really big difference. So another thing that's a little denser, almost. Yeah, like a, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Another thing that's um, interesting about olive oils and to know about olive oils is often at the finish, like when it goes down, you get a little bit of pepperiness, mm -hmm. and that pepperiness is indicative that it's a fresh and b that it has a high level of polyphenols, which are the antioxidants, which the make good things make extra virgin good for you. Okay, let's talk about this one. This is called Franci Le Trebbiane. It's from Tuscany. Wow. It is. Uh, Franchi is probably the most celebrated and awarded uh, producer in Italy. 
for, for olive oil. Mm -hmm. um, this There's a, a guide like the Wine Spectator for olive oil, and this one was really? ranked 97 out of 100. So. Oh, and we've got a beautiful picture of Tuscany, just so yes. you know. Very, very it's close. beautiful. So that would be the same region. Yeah, no kidding. That and this yeah. one here. Wait, uh, wait. I know you just got to keep trying. Okay, though, I just got to keep going. Because we got to get to the balsamic as well. Tell us about this one. This one is uh, from the heel of the boot from Puglia. Um, it's a single mm. cultivar, which means just one olive type called Coratina. It's of, of the four, it's the most robust of the oils that we have. It's Quick, also Mike, organic. Oh, more. right. Sorry. Yeah, well, I was getting lost and in this And we've got one. some beautiful photos that go along with this one, too. Yes. Maybe you can tell us about it. Yeah, I will. Um, this. Uh, Frantoyo is the word for uh, an olive oil farm, and this Frantoyo has been around for um, over 300 years. Um, I don't know. I think we've got a picture of the yeah. tree here. There we go. That's actually a picture of ripening olives. So, everyone, some people are confused of what's a green olive, what's a black olive, what's the difference. All unripe olives are green. Right. As they ripen on the tree, they become a, a darker, blacker, that's purple color. That's a 300 year old yeah, olive tree? Yeah, that tree is 300 years old. And does the, does the density or the flavor, like does it change as the tree the goes through? The flavor doesn't um, change dramatically. It becomes a hardier tree. It can withstand the elements. So if there is yeah. a snowfall, which does happen every once in a while, it's it's mm -hmm. more likely to survive It's able that. to survive it. How was it? Um, uh, incredible. I mean, all of them. And it's really interesting as you, as you go through. It's like a wine tasting flight, right? You can taste right. the subtle differences mm -hmm. as you go along. And that's density. Right. All right, let's move on to the balsamic because it's the same thing. You can get balsamic yeah, so vinegar for five bucks or you can right. get some good stuff. For 55. So what's the difference? Um, basically, we're talking about traditional balsamic or your more expensive balsamics. They are, traditional means they've been aged and there's three different categories. There's a 12-year-old, an 18-year-old, and a 25-year-old. So it's like scotch, something you're familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Now we're going to try what today? I'm going to give you a sample of um, a balsamic that is not traditional. So what that means is there's it hasn't been aged. There's no real regulations that enforce what can be in it. So there can be yeah. a, a certain percentage of caramel coloring, mm -hmm. sugars, and whatnot added to it. Whereas traditional balsamic, like olive oils and, and like wines and, it's and cheeses, and it's, it's very regulated. controlled. Yeah. Um, and there's actually a panel. So if I'm a balsamic producer and I have my 12 year old balsamic that I want to introduce to the market, it has to actually pass a panel of judges. Really? Yeah. You're kidding. Yes. So. I want to be a judge like that. <laughs> I know. Okay, let's okay. give it a shot. So I'm going to give you guys both a little sample of. This is the. Is this one going to blow the back of our heads off before we get the really good stuff? Is <laughs> that what you're going for? Level, I'm <laughs> this is like screech versus, you know. Stop. Okay, there okay. we go. Okay. So, Mike, I'll you're going to have to do this because we don't have time oh. to taste it. We only, we're out of All time. Right. So you got God. to just drink it. <laughs> so that's. Is it a balsamic you would find at your, your head supermarket? Is your head going to explode? <clears throat> no, but it's, you know, it's all right. And I've then you've got the traditional times. So this kind. is a traditional balsamic. This is 12 years old. Okay. This comes from Emilia. Um, Emilia. So there's two regions in Italy where uh, balsamic can come from, Modena and Emilia. Is it smooth? Oh, it's, oh. See the difference there? <laughs> and now his head's going to explode in a different well, way. Well, it just goes on and on. There's a, like an oiliness to it almost. And it's a, very rich, wow. and it, it has several different flavor, fla um, levels. Sorry, levels It's still flavor. going. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. Well, and, and people sometimes, I, I know when I think of balsamic, I get a little, you know, like, what do I do with it, right? right. You know, you put it in like So a um, in addition to just, you know, mixing it with your olive oil and dipping, which is a, a North American thing, like you wouldn't find that. <laughs> <in> <laughs> <laughs> Italians <laughs> would be appalled. They're like, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> 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 um, it's wonderful on, on sweet things, like with crepes, with on top of strawberries. Wow. I've had an I ice, ice, ice cream. It's delicious. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank Absolutely you. delicious. Woo. So if you want to find out more, Thanks, uh, you can go to the website, find out all the information. We're going to take a quick break. And when we return, it's time for some fashion right after this. Don't go away.